The Venom X4 is a mouse controller for consoles and it's the latest offering from 2ACT. It's been designed to work with the PS3, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS4 and strangely the PC. I guess if you really want to use an analog stick for movement instead of a keyboard then this is an option. It also works with both the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One S. I'm guessing it also works with the Xbox One X, although the website doesn't clarify. For this review I'll be focusing on how it performs with the PS4. And along with this review, I also want to discuss whether or not these types of devices should be considered cheating. The Venom X4 costs $200 in Australia, and for that you get the mouse, the wand, yes, that's a weird name, the transceiver, all the cables you'll need, and some additional weights for the mouse. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a mouse mat, which I'd strongly recommend for obvious reasons. While the Venom X4 is technically plug and play, it does require a very specific set of steps to get it to pair with the console. There's an instruction manual and a separate setup guide to walk you through the process, but to give you an idea of the complexity, here's a quick rundown of how to pair it with the PS4. And just for reference, the setup with other consoles would be very similar. First, plug the mouse and the PS4 controller into the transceiver. Then, plug the transceiver into one of the PS4's USB ports. Now turn on the PS4 controller. You may need to log into the system at this point, although this doesn't always seem to be necessary. And if the setup has worked, you should get a green light on the transceiver. Now you can turn on the wand and you should be good to go. It seems straightforward enough, but if you get the order wrong then you'll have to start over. Oh, and remember you'll have to keep the PS4 controller on and plugged into the transceiver, otherwise it loses the connection after a while. Needing a regular controller to be plugged into the transceiver at all times is a bit strange and it adds to the already large clutter of cables. I assume it's needed to make the necessary handshake with the console, but for a product that costs more than twice the price of a standard controller, it feels like a bit of a hacky solution. Overall, the build quality is pretty good. The transceiver, mouse and wand all feel sturdy, and although I've only been using it for a couple of weeks, it seems like it would stand up to regular long-term abuse. The mouse in particular has a nice weight and feel to it, although the buttons feel a bit cheap compared to the rest of the construction. You can add additional weights to the mouse as well, so if you think a heavier weight feels better then that's totally an option. The wand also feels good, both it and the mouse have a grippy matte surface so sweaty hands won't be an issue. Personally I think the wand could have been a little larger. This is actually a point the marketing says is an improvement over the previous model. I have pretty small hands and even still they feel strained from gripping it for any prolonged period. Also it could stand to be a bit heavier. Unlike the mouse, you can't add weights to customise it, which is a bit of a shame. One other thing that I'd like to comment about its appearance, and something that I think is odd, is that the light on the mouse doesn't match the transceiver or the wand. It doesn't affect performance of course, but it would give it a more unified look if it was all green. And it was a little confusing with the mouse being red, I actually thought there was an error at first. So let's move on to one of the most important sections, performance. In my time with the X4, it has been very consistent. I've used similar third-party devices in the past, and they always seem to have some kind of quirk or specific environment requirement to get them working 100%. In my time with the Venom X4, it has been flawless, with no disconnects, latency, or unexpected behavior. Whether you come from a gamepad or mouse and keyboard background, the learning curve with the X4 will be steep, particularly if you aren't familiar with using a mouse for aiming. Learning where all the buttons are located and building up the necessary muscle memory to find them without thinking takes time. Don't expect the X4 to improve your game instantly and turn you into a pro overnight. That being said, once you get comfortable you'll notice a huge difference in accuracy and you'll start making shots that you thought were impossible with a regular controller. Reaction times go way up and depending on how high you dial up the sensitivity, your ability to turn quickly to engage enemies or check your surroundings dramatically improves too. In fact, this was the biggest unexpected benefit of using a mouse for me. Normally on a regular controller I play with a slowish look speed, so I'm not often aware of what's happening in my peripheral, and I found that being able to quickly check my blind spots was a huge advantage. I personally found that turning up the sensitivity really high felt the most comfortable for aiming, although this may not be the case for everybody. The buttons, as I mentioned before, aren't the highest quality, but they are responsive. Tuac claim a 200 millisecond response time. I personally couldn't tell the difference between a regular DualShock button and these, but there certainly wasn't any noticeable delay, and they have a nice tactile click when pressed. Buttons can be configured any way you like too, and I really like how easy it is to quickly change the sensitivity of the mouse with one hand on the fly. Seeing as every game I tried needed a totally different sensitivity, not having to jump into a menu to change this was extremely handy. 
I did have some issues with the button layout though. The F and 4 buttons in particular on the wand, which sit almost adjacent to the D-pad, are in a really bad position for me. While playing Battlefield 1, I kept accidentally opening the minimap when trying to use the D-pad. You can remap and deactivate buttons to get around this, but simply having their position higher on the wand would have solved this problem. The other button I'm not totally in love with is this one. I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to press this while holding the mouse. The only way I can get it to work is if I bend my thumb in a really unnatural position. Even then it only works about half the time, so I'd recommend assigning it to something low priority. I realise that I'm criticising the button layout quite heavily, but in reality Tuark have done a pretty good job considering how many additional buttons they've had to fit on the mouse. You can actually use a regular mouse and keyboard with the transceiver, and for some games this might be a better option. The only issue with doing this is that depending on the mouse you use, you might be a little short of buttons unless you're using a keyboard too. It's a nice option though, particularly for people who already have a decent mouse and keyboard for gaming. Now I do have a couple of other minor gripes with the X4, although none of these are deal breakers. Firstly, there's no rumble. I guess having rumble in a mouse would be difficult to implement, and it would be both weird and potentially disrupt how the mouse operates, so I get why it hasn't been included. The other thing I'm not wild about is that most games seem to need a unique setup. Now it's not unusual to need to tweak your button config on a controller for each game, but I personally found that every new game that I tried with the X4 required a lot of fiddling to find the sweet spot. Even games that are similar like Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty felt very different using the same settings. Again, these aren't huge issues, and I think over time you become much more skilled at being able to adjust the settings. But certainly at the start, I found that there was a lot of downtime spent tinkering with the settings to make sure that everything felt right. Now something that I think is definitely worth discussing is whether or not using a mouse on console is cheating. Firstly, there's more than one reason that you might want to use a device like the X4 on console. Having more precise aim is an obvious one, but for players used to playing on PC, it can simply be about using controls that feel comfortable. It may also provide a greater level of accessibility for players with a disability. At the end of the day though, I think that the level of precision that's available with the Venom or a mouse in general raises some concerns. Even a player of average skill using a mouse would be way more deadly than a player of the same skill using a regular controller. There may be some edge cases where this isn't true, and of course some highly skilled players using a regular controller can still dominate, but in general I think it creates an uneven playing field. With no way to separate different controllers in-game, then the people playing with mouse have an unfair advantage. It's not cheating in the same way that an aimbot, wall hack, or some other kind of software manipulation is. And while using a device like the X4 isn't technically illegal, there has been some objection by game developers such as Blizzard who have actively spoken out about the use of mouse and keyboard on console. From a development point of view, I don't think it would be too hard to police, and one possible solution, rather than outlawing it, is to have lobbies specifically for players using keyboard and mouse. I guess the reason that this hasn't happened yet is because the number of people using a mouse on console is probably quite low. But, as it stands, I personally think that for most people it does classify as cheating. The learning curve may be steep, but it's clear that with enough practice, precision with devices such as the X4 can be far superior than what's possible with the controller. Jack Frags also did a video reviewing a similar product, and he also discussed this topic. His perspective is definitely worth listening to if you're interested, and I've stuck a link in the description to his video if you want to watch it. So with all that being said, do I think that the Venom X4 is a good product? Well, it's far from a perfect product, but for the price, it provides a decent mouse option for players on console. PC players might be a little underwhelmed, but anyone new to using a mouse will probably really enjoy the increased control and precision. A few extra options and a slightly different button layout could improve things further, but these criticisms are certainly not deal breakers. Without question, there are better mouse and keyboard options that you could use with the transceiver for a more accurate and PC-like experience, but the default mouse and wand work well enough. And ethics aside, it's a pretty solid option for anyone wanting to try mouse on console. If you have any further questions about the X4 or my experience with it, drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'm out. Yeah. <sighs>